today is logging day. We have Bobby Kendall with Whitetail Group bringing his crew in here and gonna start cutting some trees down. This whole process happens so fast and damn near instantly changes your farm. So my goal for filming this was to give others an idea of what it looks like, how the process is done, get some before and after clips of them logging so you can kind of get an idea and feel what it looks like. But if this is something that you're considering on doing on your farm, stick around, check out this video. I think it's really gonna change the way that we hunt this farm and follow us throughout the season as I think we're gonna have some good luck after this project's completed. So what's the plan, man? How, how do we kick this off? Well, just send send Dakota down in there. He'll start coming out with trees. I'm about to go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and suck these tops that way just a hair. That makes sense. Or if they can be dropped that way, the further that way, the better. And, and these tops in here, the more spread out we can have them, you know, not falling on each other, the better, you know, so it's as kind of thick and shit as possible. Okay. Yeah, so the old adage is money's made on the landing with logging and, you know, markets change and they come and go and, you know, depending on what's going on, this stuff gets manufactured, we call it. This is manufacturing the logs, you know, into these products um, differently. So right now, like white oak, the stave market is just what basically is on fire and, and it absorbs so much of the material. It's what kind of creates competition for, you know, 60 70 percent of the white oak material and drives the prices up so right now it's pretty easy because it's you know you're basically just making veneer logs which are the highest dollar and then stave logs and then uh after that pretty much blocking which is the low quality pallets and stuff like that so when you're doing this there it's not an exact science like me and two or three other guys could all do it and everybody be maybe a little bit different you know but the important thing is just like that you're thinking and you know you know what lengths guys are looking for like in veneer it needs a, a whole foot of trim and in white oak they're they're really the nine footers which are 10 feet are actually a little more sought after right now than the eights and um so there's a kind of a lot going on a lot to look at but you know you kind of step back and look at it like like golf you know what iron am i going to use you're kind of like looking at it and have an idea of what you're going to do and uh sometimes it'll work out as you go down the tree sometimes it won't but like so this one, I already kind of went down it, the state. So it's got too much crook to be a veneer log. It's got really nice wood. So the wood quality is really good, you know, for would have been for veneer, but it's not straight enough. So it's going to be a stave log. So stave guy is like a nine foot 10. 
a flat 613 or a 16 in trim. So this log here, we're gonna go 16 in trim and then there's a knot below it. So we're gonna cut that there and that's gonna be a stave log. And then this one here, so the stave market, they like them long, but really they're looking for 38 inch bolts, they call them, which is like, you know, basically for a whiskey barrel. So even though something's rough, it, like this log here is clean. It's got a kind of a bolt here and it's, it's clean enough. And then it's got a bolt down here at the end that's clean enough, even though it gets rough right in the middle here. So we're gonna try and try and clean that one up and push it in this stave too. So now you can kind of tell, okay, we can see when it's standing, you know, you don't really know what you got. You don't know what the inside of the tree is gonna look at. Now we can see a little bit better. There's guys out there that'll take bids on these trees like they are now, but no one buyer can pay what the individual end users of each of these products can pay, you know, because they're the end users. So we're going to basically get all these logs marked up for the end users of each product, and then we're going to lay them out and present them so that they can see both sides, and then we're going to, we're going to sell them. And the veneer logs, when we get to one of them, I'll show you what we do with those, um, in a minute you know a lot a lot of getting top dollar out of your logs and you know maybe it's one job maybe it's just the buyers knowing that you take pride in presenting the logs but when you got them laid out and they can walk between each log and see what they're buying and they can see both ends like you know if there's a spot in the butt that's kind of concerning and they can't see what it looks like here well they might pay less for that than if they can walk to the other end and see it so it all goes a long way. Sometimes, you know, like we'll cut, we'll cut like a knot out, you know, just to clean up the log. Sometimes you lose a little footage, like in the next one, you'll cut some footage off to clean it up to get higher board foot, you know, average. So there's kind of a lot to it, um, but we'll go through some more. So with the low quality stuff, <coughs> meaning there's knots on all the sides and, and everything, you got uh pallets railroad ties and crane mats uh, we don't have any mat mills around here if we add a mat mill they'd love that nice big diameter long straight they like 16s 18s 20s 22s 24s that are at least 14 inches at that small size we don't have any mat mills around here um so the big thing with that low quality stuff is these pallet mills they like eight foot they like eight foot eight so they can make a railroad tie or 10 foot in trim. So those are kind of like our options. So then I'll scale back with this side to see what works out. So that's a seven and a half. It'll work for a pallet guy, but they'd rather have longer so they could make a tie, you know, so that's nine, six. So, so they'll be able to get two ties out of that. So. so a lot of these products, it's kind of dependent on what type of mills are close yes. to you and like- So like when we work in Southern Iowa, that would have gone to Southern Iowa Mat Company. You know, and they would have paid quite a bit more for it, you know, you know, 60 cents, but then they pay for trucking. So you might see 45, you know, and the pallet around here fluctuates between 30 and 40 cents. So this log here has a, has a fighting chance because the white oak's so high. You know, there's, <clears throat> there's a, it's center hearted, it's got good wood. There's a little something going on right here, but it's not bad and it starts moving right here see that if you look down the log see how it starts moving to the right right there yeah. just a little bit but the white oak mark is so hot so we'd have to cut that our eight footer we'd have to cut there and our nine footer we'd cut there so what we do with the veneer log so we sell the stave logs we'll have the stave buyer come out here he'll scale them right here he'll buy them or whatever the veneer logs what we do and this is this is i used to only do this on my part but we do it now for landowners we got these little tags they're plastic and they go on a hammer and uh essentially we'll get all our veneer put out in a row and we'll we'll slap that into the small lend here and we will record a sheet so we'll record length diameter and the board feet and we'll put it next to that tag number and then we'll send these in so like if if our exporter came down here and he bought that piece of wood you know here on the farm and this gets exaggerated with walnut that's higher dollars, you know, but if he were to buy that on the farm, he would pay, you know, one price. But when it goes up there, because he doesn't know exactly what he's going to 
sell it for. It depends on what kind of order comes in. It depends, like, they can really work, you know, work it. Like, they can put together sales where they're selling somebody some really good stuff, but they're making them buy some mediocre stuff, and they'll drive the price up. So they're brokering the logs for us overseas. And when they do that, they have the ability to, to maximize the amount of money that they bring, and then they just charge us an export fee or commission of, like, 40 cents a board foot to sell that for us, and then we pay for trucking. So whatever they sell that lawn for up there on behalf of us, they'll deduct about 60 cents a board foot for trucking and commission, and then that's what we'll see. So we'll see quite a bit more. On, on nice walnut logs, you know, that can mean lots and lots of money because there can be a swing of, you know, they might look at a walnut log and go, is that gonna bring, am I gonna sell for seven or nine? And they might buy it for 650, here and then when it sells for nine up there you you know you make a, a lot of money but that's how we do it we tag the veneer we send it in and we have it exported or brokered for us and they can really play the game a lot more than we can with a few logs they can really you know leverage you know sales together and get top dollar out of it all right so in this spot we have a little goes around here and the deer naturally have came down this hill where the creek pinches it and we have a stand at the top that is a killer stand we're going to be skidding out probably about 30 trees right here so uh, dakota's reinforcing this creek crossing putting more dirt down we're going to put some logs down so they can get all these trees across here pretty excited about being able to finally cross the creek right here and have this it's going to be awesome All right, this is the biggest tree on the property, big old burrow. Going down right now. So last time we were out here, we were showing you kind of the manufacturer process where we're taking the full tree and and basically marking it up to be cut into products. So this is a row of, uh, it's a pile of white oak veneer. There's probably a couple walnut veneer logs and then a few walnut saw logs. But in particular, these, these white oak veneer logs that are plated and have the tags on them, essentially once those got cut off the tree, um, Today, Alex tagged them and then recorded that on a sheet, the length and diameter and the tag number. So we know we know that log. Essentially, it's got a barcode. And especially this time of year, the truss plate helps it from splitting. We get it stacked, which it helps it, you know, out here in the heat better. But these these will be moved really quickly up to the yard. And, you know, this is why we cut on, on shares with people because we're all basically on the same team. We're trying to get the max gross dollars out of the timber. So these actually are not bought or paid for yet, um, but just like on our own farms, they're gonna be accounted for and sent up north. These two big rows here are all staves. So this buyer will actually come out here to the farm and he'll scale all these. And then we've got some piles of blocking down here, which are our low quality stuff. Um, we scaled all that stuff today. 
and then got it all pushed up and stacked. We'll actually haul that stuff right into the, the blocking mill and tell them how many feet is there and kind of name our price on that. So this log is a good example of, of why we cut on shares with people and why we manufacture the logs and get them for, ready for sale to individual end users of the products, the bees being stave logs. That originally was, was manufactured as a veneer log, but it had some issues in the butt. So it got tossed into the stave row. You know, we will make a little bit less money on that particular log because somebody didn't buy it as a veneer and then it have issues. But all in all, when you take that guesswork out of all the wood and the buyer knows exactly what he's buying, he can scale the true footage and he doesn't have to build any fluff or what if, at the end of the day, that's what that's what grosses this job, this farm top dollar, or what I like to say is market value of the products that come out of your timber. These are products. These are stave logs that are going to an end user stave mill. You know, you kind of got two things. You have the price per board foot that somebody's paying for a log, and then you have the scale or what is the volume. And, um, it's important for the scale to be correct. You know, otherwise it doesn't matter what the price is or the price per board foot. Um, this is a good example. You know, when you lay that ruler over the top of the log, depending on how that log is oriented, some of them are exaggerated like this. You know, this log is probably about 15 inches, 14 or 15 inches this way, but it's, it's probably about 18 this way. You know, so it's really important to scale this and the correct way of doing it is to scale across the short side and the long side and take the average and then you'll probably see them do a diagonal. Um, so without the logs cut up into products and laid out like this, sometimes it can be just a guess and usually that guess is always gonna be on the, the side of caution. So when you take the extra effort to manufacture the logs given the current markets and the buyers can see what they're buying, volume and quality, and you sell to individual end users of all these products, essentially what you create is the market value of the timber that came off of your farm. All right, the Whitetail Group just finished this logging project on our property, and right here, this is a southeast facing ridge that we hit the hardest. There's a lot of treetops scattered all over. It looks like pure destruction, but the way that we have some of these tops set up, the deer come down this logging road and they have to go back by one of our tree stands right here. They really don't have an option to come down this side hill like they used to. So we're gonna go take you around to a couple other spots and show you what it looks like now that they've completed the project. All right, so we made this little kill plot and this was created by taking out that big tree and a couple big trees just right around this area. And what we did is we pushed the tops up along this edge. There's a CRP field right on this edge, pushed them in here. And this allowed us enough room to get in here. I came in here with a little ATV disc, disced it up and just used a type of throw and grow mix, seeded it, put fertilizer on it. And it looks pretty good right now. We're at the end of August and I think this is going to make it. All right, so this is a big creek bottom, and there really wasn't too many trees taken down here, just a couple walnuts. But up on the top, we have a lot of trees to the west here. And with this newly created logging road, we were able to actually drive my truck down here and build this 360. And we are at a major intersection where these ro logging roads come together over there to the north and to the south. So. I think this is going to be a killer spot. The deer are pretty much forced to come within 30, 40 yards of this blind. So come fall, peak of the rut, this is going to be a killer spot to be down here. So with us having walked through our woods with Bobby, we were able to pick and choose the trees that we wanted to take out. And on this particular ridge, 
There's a couple really good oak trees that we decided to keep because they're known roost trees for turkeys and we all like to turkey hunt. So we decided to keep a couple along this ridge. Actually, it's more than a couple, but the, the turkeys love to walk this middle ridge in and fly up on the side of these taller oaks down in the bottom here. So if you're working with a logger, just keep stuff like that in mind. All right, so wrapping up this whole project, I would mark this off as a huge success. If you're thinking about logging your property, be as involved as you possibly can be. Work with a company or a logging group that also has wildlife in mind and not just timber because we want a healthy timber stand you know, for years to come. We don't want to clear cut everything and I feel like we achieved that working with the whitetail group. Not only do you win because you get paid from the marketable timber that come off your property but also the wildlife now have more bedding, they have more cover, next year they're going to have more native browse and everyone wins. And if you control your invasives, I'd recommend doing that before you start a logging project. Otherwise, once that sunlight hits the ground, when you get that green up, it's going to just get out of control. But now that we have these logging roads, it's going to be a little more easy to manage. And I'm super excited to see how we do come this fall. But also follow along. Next year, we'll do a recap. We'll come back in here and show what it looks like after the spring green up. But fall's right around the corner, and I'm getting excited to get in the whitetail woods, and hopefully we can kill a big buck out of here.